The New York Times says in the last decade, Lana Del Rey has exploded into one of the most consistent album artists and world builders of this decade, aesthetically presaging pop musics and the world's turn toward opiates and the apocalypse. I didn't understand half of that. I don't know what any of that means, but I do know that Lana Del Rey is dope, and we are delighted to welcome her back to the Kevin Bean Show. I mean, you could not have sounded more like a narc (laughs) saying dope. She's dope. Lana's dope. Hey, Lana. (laughs) She may be dope, but you shouldn't say it. Hello, fellow kids. I think that's the point. (laughs) Hello, children. Do you guys smoke the weed? (laughs) (laughs) I'm so dead already. I'm over already. That's it. it. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Thank you. (laughs) It is uh, is great to see you. You you seem to be in a a very good place right now on the eve of the new album coming out tomorrow. You're feeling good. I know know all the albums are your babies, but this one is the youngest, so it's the cutest and the one you love the most, it's right? It's so true. I do love all my youngest children the most as they mm-hmm. are first sure. put yeah. out into the world. Yeah. You were finished with this album last year? Uh, no. Did I read I, that right? No. Um, no, well, I, I, st- I definitely started last year, um, like last Jan, a mm-hmm. year, year and a half ago. A year ago, January, okay. And then I was pretty much done, I'd say, in June, but definitely putting putting some final touches on, on it. Is up that until. difficult to stop? putting final touches on it? It is for me. I would think so. Yeah. You would always be thinking, oh, I could make that better if I just did that one thing. Well, and along the lines of being kind of an album artist, you, for me, I do make the vinyl. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for instance, like the Abel from The weekend. like Mm -hmm. he can finish that night and and just put it out the next day. But I really make physical copies so i have to be done 90 days before the release date which kill it kills me because mm. i always think of something oh I great yeah, like, yeah. you have 90 days I to question 90 everything 90 days to think about everything yeah yeah <laughs> that's brutal yeah is this the first time you work with uh, your producer jack Atnoff? yeah it is did you you knew him before obviously everybody in music seems to know jack uh yeah i i really didn't know him that well i had met him eight years ago uh i was i think i was coming out of an elevator he was going into the elevator at um, uh, Emil Haney's studio who helped produce my, my one of my, fir- my first album. You have okay. a lot of good memories. I have no... I, eight years ago, I couldn't tell you in a million years well, what happened. I didn't remember either until oh, okay. I met Jack again a year and a half ago and he's like, remember me and the guys from Fun. <laughs> okay. We all had our glasses on and we were like, hi, Lana. <laughs> <laughs> did you pretend to know or no, did you really I, remember? As soon as he said that, okay. I vividly remember like three, you know, like sweet guys with the glasses being like hi we love video games because anytime i've ever said that to anyone i know they're lying no i i i okay. did you right. did yeah. remember Very and sweet. he's um and i but i had never worked with him and i wasn't writing when i met him mm-hmm. and he was like if you have a day off tomorrow <clears throat> in new york you should just come down and let's see what we cook up and, um, and he kind of primed the pump a little bit Yes. Oh, definitely. He was He was like, I know I have good stuff for you, which no one ever says because I usually bring my stuff to them. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. We were, we've had him on the show a couple of times. And you have? We are so, yeah. And we mm-hmm. love, him. love him. We're so impressed with him. Just not I'm only obviously as, a, as an artist, as a songwriter, as a musician and as a producer, but just as a person, he just seems genuinely like so cool and okay. nice but and with positive. All, but even with all those things being like Lana Del Rey doesn't come immediately to mind no. when you think no, of Jack. Agreed. So what, what was it that he came to the table with it sort of got you over that sort of pop hump I guess that he's best known for or getting Grammys for well I told him the same thing I was like I just you know because I very much do my own thing and Mm -hmm. I'm pretty casual in the studio like if if it works it works but um he I I guess the thing that was interesting was we went down to his studio and He played like a little progression of six chords and without being cheesy, I asked him, could I, can I, am I allowed to have those chords? They were so beautiful. So he was already in tune with you when you, when he started playing. If he wasn't in tune with me, he was just so talented chordally that I, it's, it's like, I just knew that if he was going to let me have those chords, then I had literally just gotten so lucky. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Look, sometimes people just click, you know, cr- creatively, personally, whatever it is, and you know yeah. it when you're in the in, in, in the right place at the right time with the right person, for sure. Uh, the album that we are speaking with Lana Del Rey about is called Norman Effing Rockwell. 
Uh, first album ever named after a guy born in the 1890s, do you think? That's a great question. Great question. We've all been it thinking it, be. Be. We, I mean, we've all been thinking it, and he it asked it. Be I've been working on it for months, wow. and he just tweeted it out. <laughs> Unbelievable. It Unreal. can't be. The reason I asked, Lana, is because, look, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I think most people see that title, and they go, okay, this is some sort of a comment on idealized America versus yeah. real-life America. But hmm. do, don't you think that many, maybe even most or almost all of the people who buy your records have no idea who Norman Rockwell is? Mm, yeah, 50 50. You think? It's, I feel like it's one of those names that's kind of like, uh, gosh, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's not like Elvis Presley, but it's. No, it's, I would it's think, out there. It's up there, yeah. It I means more it, than the name. I would think even yeah. people that don't know who that is, they mm-hmm. recognize the name at there, the very least. Or at least the aesthetic. There is something yeah. familiar about yes. the name. Yes. Nostalgia in a couple words, I suppose. And yeah. then I like the effing in the middle just just to, just to go the other way just, just for a to second. Just let you know like <laughs> there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of lightness somewhere in the album and Well, I noticed you were smiling on the cover. Yes. I felt that was different. Where yeah, did, where, or or I'd say like smizing. Yeah, you've smirked. Smizing. You've yeah. smirked. I don't know about that was a word. Watch America's Next Top Model. <laughs> <laughs> but you've straight up smiled in this one. I mean, and I read it's a bit about like the humor that you brought to the record. But like, is that a conscious decision to do that kind of stuff? I found that I was smiling as I was singing, mm-hmm. which I I do sometimes. Like in my last album when I was singing, um, uh, love, uh, one one of the first songs mm-hmm. I put out. Mm-hmm. Like I remember. You know, smiling. Look at these kids with their vintage music. Um, so, for the title track of Norman Effing Rockwell, you know, it's just the lyrics made me laugh. Like I can't, I probably can't say them because no, what well, we, we can be, we can be, but you know, it's like, goddamn man, child, you fucked me so good that I almost said. I love you. You know, it's just like, <laughs> I guess I was just cracking myself up. Why aren't you writing greeting cards, Lana? <laughs> Thank Seriously. You. That's amazing. Thank you. Next, um, for a. The, uh, the album will be available uh, everywhere tomorrow. By the way, does, uh, and, uh, on all the digital services, but does that also include physical? Are we talking CD and vinyl tomorrow as well? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have to take a very quick break. Lana, you stand by. We've got many more questions for you. Thank you again for coming. It's so great to see you. We'll be right back with Lana Del Rey right after this in the world famous K Rock. Thank you. And we are sitting with Lana Del Rey here on the world famous K Rock. Uh, what was it? A couple years ago, you played the Weenie Roast, Lana. I think it. Does it sound right? If it wasn't two, two it was three? close to that. No, oh my gosh. definitely two? not three. Yeah. Okay. That was your, fun. <laughs> your people are your people are passionate, man. They are. It was it was you owned that crowd that day. So mm-hmm. I know it's a little late to say this, but thanks for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's we, our first chance. So okay. hey, listen. Thank you for having me. I mean, honestly, the fact that like I don't want to say someone like me, but someone like me can come down and like play a show like that for an amazing radio station not not in the plan and 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 super beyond my wildest dreams like it just feels like rock star stuff and it's it was like a lot for me I was nervous for that show and of course I noticed like so many of the same kids up front that I see at a lot of the other shows so right. it was really cool but yeah. it, it is cool how much like uh, like rock music has sort of embraced you like I'm like when I look at people's Instagram I like don't really care about the photos I care about the comments and right. boy Courtney Love comments a lot on your photos yes, yeah. <laughs> she really is the top of the Lana Del Rey fan club have you met like have you hung out with her yeah that's my girl yeah you guys are like home <laughs> I've never had a friend as close as you and Courtney Love are we're homies alright based on Instagram alone <laughs> yeah and you both recorded season of the witch too is that a coincidence I actually didn't know she recorded Season of the Witch. Yeah, Ooh. she did a nice job. And it's very different from your version, too. Which I'm is sure. Great song to check out. All right, you hit you hit on something that I wanted to ask you about, Lana, because you talked about how it's beyond your wildest expectations playing a show like that and the success you've had in your headline festivals and everything like that. Yeah. I just finished rereading Keith Richards' uh, autobiography, Life, which is maybe one of the best rock autobiographies ever written. Yeah, I and never talked, read that. It's so great. But he talks about how much he pushed back on the pop star aspect of his job. He's like, look, I don't care about the TV shows and I don't care about the videos. I don't care about any of that stuff. I only want to make music. That's all I care about is making music. And everything else is a distraction for Mm. me. Um, You ever have any part of that? Or do you love being able to run the total package and make it a multimedia experience for yourself? I really like being in the middle of the mix. I just find sometimes like I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be there because like I don't really know that all that many people like, <clears throat> I don't know, like I think of Father John Misty or mm-hmm. 
like I like you know the national or but then I do have friends who you know are super out there like Ariana Grande or you know I mean you have a song coming out with Miley Cyrus and Ariana Grande I do so you are definitely <laughs> riding the line between sort of being in that scene and yeah. not being in that scene yeah we out there you out yeah. there <laughs> we nah, out you now. out there you can't be in the Charlie's Angels movie and not be out there that's correct yeah, I get it have you seen the Charlie's Angels movie yet by the way um, no we had three clips that we that we got it looks see. amazing oh. yeah yeah, Looks- yeah, it's going to be so fun. I mean, we've got geesh girl power to the nth degree. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the- Elizabeth Banks directed, right? Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. part of the well- reason that you don't know if you're going to fit in or not because you sort of create your own lane? I think it's just the sound. Yeah. You know, like... Um, How will it mash with everything It's just else? so much slower. You know, sometimes, for instance, like if I headline, like when I headline, not headline, when I played Glastonbury, you know, I, I was just like, it's going to be a lot of ballads, you know, is this, can I get the energy going in the same way, but a different way? Because like, I'm concerned about the crowd, like I want it to feel cool. Yeah, of course. And um, you can't really plan for it. So right. I just never really want to be somewhere where like... Th- like it's just a different vibe. Is there anybody know? that you hate to follow that you've followed? Y- you like mean the band before like you playing. on a stage? Yes, because I feel like you would check that out just to sort of make sure. Well, oh, I mean the definitely. vibe. I guess tonally too. Oh, the yeah, vibe. Yeah. yeah. I think it's mostly always been. It's like Guar than you would be a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like Anthrax Although, and then Lana. But like you would be surprised. I'm sure they're big fans. I'm just saying like I wonder if you want to do that. Like yo, the Guar just had a man eaten by a large manator. Do you want to come out and do Lana Del Rey songs? <laughs> no, actually the first like one of the first big shows I ever did, I want to say it was somewhere like Ant- Antwerp? Antwerp? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh Oh, it was a classic rock fest, mm-hmm. and like I'm delusional, so I'm thinking I'm gonna fit right in. I can totally do this. Yeah, it was. I want to say Springsteen, and oh. I think Lionel Richie was there, and someone else. And my shows have been going so well, and this was just right in the middle, a festival right in the middle of the summer. And I thought this is gonna be amazing, and the crowd was like stunned in a bad way. Oh no. I was oh. All we don't want to cross those Lionel Richie hardcore stands, man. You gotta be careful. <laughs> that they'll, was, co- they'll come at you. They will come at you <laughs> in foreign territory. It was shocking. That was probably my most shocking show where I, I reevaluated what I was really? doing. Really? So you walked off and went, mm. no more Lionel. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Gotta draw the line somewhere. Yeah. Uh, th- this is the voice of uh, Lana Del Rey. We're talking about Norming F and Rockwell, which is the uh, album that is coming out available everywhere tomorrow. By the way, Here's a, here's a fun fact from Billboard magazine. Born to Die, one of your previous records, Lonnie, you probably yes. know this, is one of only three women in history. That album, one of you were one of three women in history on the Billboard chart to have an album spend at least 300 weeks on the charts. Mm-hmm. 300 weeks. Yep, I the heard that. The other two are Adele for 21 and Carole <laughs> King's Tapestry. How about that? That's that amazing. That is crazy. That, that is, is crazy. That is what is that? I mean, even though you would say, who's Adele? But if I grabbed you as a teenage year and was like, you're going to be listed with Carol, K-, like, you know what I mean? Like, you would be like, this is insane. Like, yes. you wouldn't even come close to believing that. Mm, no, especially because, like, when I was younger, the women I knew who were older, like Carol King, Tapestry, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joni Mitchell, Blue. Mm-hmm. I mean, I heard that constantly and never really listened to too much of it until I was in college. Um,. So those are like Bibles for like uh, total Bibles. for like my, all yeah. my therapists. Like every therapist I've ever had, those are her favorite albums. Really? Yeah. I you know, it's like, like that Meryl Streep character, like the woman wearing no, like the blanket good, top. Though. Yeah. Like you they must love... have good. I do. Assistance. Numerous. <laughs> <laughs> Numerous help is needed. So much. It takes a, a village. It takes a village. <laughs> um, we can't let you go without asking because we played it and I, I forgot to say something coming out. But um, people will be curious how you ended up uh, covering the Sublime song that's such a huge hit for us on K Rock right now. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm thank you so much for playing that song. I did that song because the label I'm signed to uh, is producing the documentary about Sublime's life story. Interesting. So they asked a bunch of people to cover um, different songs, and I, you know, obviously said yes and went down. But I mean, I, d- I definitely thought about it just because I do love Sublime so much. And sure was like it's it's like probably one of the few things I don't want to fuck up. Oh, so you like it enough that you're afraid your involvement might I listen you to You just don't want to have any part of I that. I listen to like a Sublime track probably every day. Driving, I'm just like that makes me feel cool. Yeah. 
And I'm, you know, yeah. Even when it's in my track listing, I'm like, oh, God. It's the coolest one. Sorry. <laughs> There's so much California on this album. Oh, yeah. So much with, California. With mm-hmm. that song mm-hmm. being Long Beach and then Venice Beach uh, and then the West Coast. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's so much California. Yes. Will you live here forever, Lana? That's so funny. Um, yeah, I think so. But <clears throat> I travel quite a bit. So I'm like in northern San Diego a lot. And, uh, you go all the way to northern San Diego? <laughs> I wow. Uh, what are, that 80 miles is a lot It is traffic. a lot. That's true in traffic yeah. for sure. That's, two, that's about, two days, right? That's, that's a true. lifetime. Of- <laughs> yeah, she brings like a canteen and a tent. She's like halfway <laughs> camps. Too I, long. I do. Yeah, too and long. a Sherpa. Yeah. <laughs> all of those things. The songs that we've heard so far are so great. I agree. And we're, and we're so Thank excited you. to hear the whole thing tomorrow. And, Thank you uh, so much. I mean, we just uh, we just enjoy spending time with you whenever we can. We love catching up, and it's nice of you to include us in your very, very busy schedule, especially this week. So thank I'm you. I'm not Anna. that busy. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right, an album. We'll, we'll see you Monday, then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, though. Oh, come on.